how I destroyed the company's DB and survived to talk about it. Okay, the, it's that subheading that really kind of changes the flavor here. Good lad. It's a good lad. Let's find out. Okay, it was a quiet Saturday. Okay, so I'm already upset at this article. What the hell are you, what the hell's going on on a Saturday? One of us, one of us. Either you released on Friday and you're getting alerted on Saturday, bad move, or you released on Saturday, bad move. There's no win starting an article this way. It was on a quiet Saturday. I received a message from support team telling me one of our customers has a problem. I decided it was important enough to start debugging. After 15 minutes, I understood the issue. There were some corrupted orders created in our DB, and we needed to delete them. Sounds trivial, right? I swear, it. please tell me this involves opening two terminals, the test terminal and the real terminal, and you F up which one. Like, this is like the most classic bamboozling of all time. At the end of the article, I share my lessons and how you can apply them to your own team. And welcome to the 600 new subscribers last week. You hear that? Press the subscribe. The breaking. For those of you not working in startups, please don't judge me. Okay, okay, okay. There are a few hundred orders to delete, so I decided not to do it manually, but to write a short squeal query. Let's go, let's go, this is so good. This is so good. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, that's so good. But hey, at least you have this. At least there's this, like you're not deleting, you have an is deleted flag so that you can at least recover, right? Right squeal, red flag, should have used an ORM, should have used Prisma, you didn't use Prisma, loser. It was a bit more complex than that, but to simplify, update orders, set is deleted, true, where ID is one, two, three. Okay, okay, okay. You can see already, you see the scale of the disaster. I actually can't see it yet. I mean, I can see the scale, the potential scale of the disaster, but why? But why, why, what, which way? I do not understand. Extra line, is it the line gap? Li is white space significant? Oh, he, oh, he only selects two lines in the, qu oh, damn, he runs it from some sort of WYSIWYG? No. Okay, okay, I don't like to look forward. I don't like to read. I don't like to read ahead. I like to try to, like, think about what could have happened here. Tell me this was a WYSIWYG issue. Oh, that would be so good. Yeah, a wizard. Uh, what you see is what you get, a WYSIWYG. All right, I pressed Control Enter and ran the command. When it took longer than a second, I understood what happened. The program I used, D Beaver, saw the empty th <laughs> Damn, you guys were right. And ignored the fourth line. Yes, I deleted all the orders in the database. I felt physically ill. And helpless. Man, man, going a little hard on the on the D Beaver there, okay? Going a little hard on the D Beaver. You can't just be deleting all of production like that. Ridiculous. Cooked. The boy cooked. We let Tim cook. Now we got a new iPhone coming out. All right, the recovery. After a deep breath, I knew I had to act, and fast. I would probably just cry a little bit. Uh, there was no place to make more mistakes or waste time. The recovery was done much better. Stopping the system. Five minutes. Creating a clone of our DB before the change. Luckily, we had a point-in-time recovery setup. 20 minutes. Calling my manager during the wait. Wow. Updating the production DB's information based on the clone. 15 minutes. Starting our system. 5 minutes. Damn, that's like an hour of downtime, right? That's 45 minutes. I decided not to restore the whole DB because I couldn't stop all systems, as we have multiple independent ones. I didn't want to lose the changes made during the recovery process. We used Manage Postgres Squeal by GCP, so I created a new clone from the time before for the update. Then I exported just the ID is deleted column from the clone and imported the result into the production DB afterwards. It was simple update select query. So 45 minutes of easily avoidable downtime. Damn. So what went wrong? Well, I think the an one answer is really obvious. You did a lot of deleting. Don't do that. Step one, don't delete the database. Make sure you put a where in there. <laughs> Use transactions. This may sound like a very stupid mistake. By the way, for those that don't remember, GitHub literally deleted production because a guy was going back and forth between a term two different terminals, test terminal and real terminal, and mixed up which one, went to the real terminal and deleted the database. Like RMRF'd it. Oh, it's GitLab? Sorry. GitLab. It was GitLab. Just remember, there's very easy ways to just ruin a good Saturday afternoon. Any given Saturday afternoon. Did he really? Yeah. Literally, really. Terminals with colors. Okay? It's so easy to mess up. That's why you gotta be, so, I mean, you gotta triple, when when you're in production world, you gotta be like, you gotta have like a buddy hanging over your shoulder. You gotta have someone like, you got like, I mean, you gotta be making some pretty serious steps here. The actual problem is that they attempted to resolve the issue immediately in place instead of following a playbook on how to resolve production data issues. Yes, that also having a safe way to do that would be the better way. Absolutely. Even like something simple. Here's like one thing I always do. Whenever I do any sort of bulk updating, I 
first make sure I get the query right, try one. First, I do a select. Can I select the correct set of data that I want? All right, that's a good first step. Don't just go in there guns a blazing and update first try. Okay, at least, I mean, minimally, at least try to get your query correct. At least make sure. You could also start with a begin. Yes, that would be good too. Step one, echo, the thing, RG prod. <laughs> Always select first. What went wrong? This may sound like a very stupid mistake you will never make, or even can't make in bigger companies. It might be true. The problem is not the wrong squeal command. A small human mistake is never the true problem. One would argue this was the problem. <laughs> One would argue that this, in fact, was actually the problem, but he did recover quickly, so we will give a thumbs up for that. Me running that command is just the end of a whole chain of failures. Working on production during the weekend. Why? In this case, it was not even that urgent. Nobody asked me to fix it immediately. I could have easily waited for Monday. Shall I go back to the bold? Bold. Old. A small human mistake is never the true problem. Problem number one. So I made a small mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. All right, point two. Who the hell runs something on a prod DB without running it on QA first? A small human mistake is never the problem. <laughs> okay, so we got we got two we got two out of five points being a small human mistake. All right, number three. Why did I manually edit the DB and not use an API call? Three out of three, people. Three out of three. This man sounds like me. This is like what I do. Number four. If there was no API, why didn't I call a teammate and have four eyes on such a sensitive action? Are we at four out of four? Are we four out of four right now? All right, number five. And the worst part. Why didn't I use a transaction? That is literally five out of five. This is, you're right. It's not one small human mistake that's ever the true problem. It's many small human mistakes. And they just, all, they all happen to be you. <laughs> hey, at least he's owning it. Hey, he's owning it. At least all of the mistakes he said, like what I would say a good thing here is that he didn't say something like this. Like, why would they let me just execute production? They, there should have been someone stopping that from happening. So that's good. Like, at least there's not some sort of, like, blind blaming somebody else or something. The, sy the system allowed me to do this. So I do like that. I do like that quite a bit. Can we all agree to that? That's good. That, I mean, there, there is some good in here. And these are all good. These are all good points, right? Don't make a meaningless change on the weekend. Wait till Monday. Always have a buddy if you're making a production change. This whole, why did I edit the DB and not use an API call? This seems difficult because there'd have to be an API call specifically for this. You know what I mean? There'd like have to be an API call for just making this specific change. Seems a little ridiculous. You could do it one at a time if there was a way to do like some sort of super user access update one order at a time type thing. That could be good. Who cares if you have to do 200 database queries to update if you're trying not to destroy your entire thing for deleting orders? There probably is a DB API for that. You're probably right. There probably is an API for that. Again, you know, but some Sometimes using APIs are hard because it requires like cookies and authentication and all that kind of stuff. So for you to be able to use that API might be a little bit more difficult. Deleting order sounds like it should have an API or at least an audit trail. Yeah. Yeah. Some sort of admin delete. True. Admin delete. Yes. API with cookies. Yeah. I know. Crazy. At least the organized recovery stopped the chain. Imagine the disaster if I couldn't restore the DB to the correct state. What Chernobyl has to do with this? <laughs> we're going to Chernobyl, boys. Boys, we're going to Chernobyl. A few months ago, I finished reading Chernobyl, the history of nuclear catastrophe. The chain of mistakes there reminded me of that cursed weekend without underestimating or comparing the dimensions of Chernobyl disaster. I love that we live. Actually, I hate that we live in this. I hate the fact that we live in preface culture. Like, no shit. No, no one literally thinks what you had to go through and what the people of Chernobyl had to go through. But we actually live in the world where if you don't say this, some dick, dickhead that's complaining about product owners being an offensive term on Twitter is going to go out and be like, Oh, he, he, he said that Chernobyl was, it was just as big of a disaster as a 45-minute downtime. Maybe we don't need to do that. Maybe a metaphor can just be a metaphor. And you can try to eat the fish and you can try to spit the bones, you know? Because not, not all metaphors are going to land. Some metaphors actually are really, really good. Are you actually comparing your DP to Chernobyl? I'm not. I, I'm actually going to stop going. I almost summoned my inner Asmund Gold there and almost went straight to straight to topics that are going to get me in so much trouble. There was a root technological problem in the RBMK reactor. It was not communicated properly. There was previous incidences involving the problem, but Chernobyl's team was not familiar with them. The team didn't follow the procedure during the safety check. After the explosion, the Soviet government tried to hide it which greatly increased the severity of the damage. Who is responsible? The designers of the reactor, the team at the power plants who didn't communicate the issues they had, the team at Chernobyl, the Soviet government. I would, one would probably just say the Soviet government. Asmund Bald. <laughs>
I'm balding right now. All of them. Disasters are never caused by a single mistake. Unless that mistake is communism. Got them. But the chain of them, our job, is to do the best we uh, can to cut the chain as early as possible. The aftermath. I didn't know what to expect from the talk with my manager on Monday. He surprised me with, make sure it won't happen again, but I prefer it that way. You made the mistake because you are dedicated and love to move fast. People with bias for action break things. It's a fact. Yes, I gave him an accent that would be akin to Expanse's Mars people. Deep South manager, let's go. Yeah, that guy's straight from the hills. He was playing a banjo right before that meeting. That is exactly what I needed to hear. A too cuddly approach saying, that's, that's okay, don't worry, thanks for fixing it, would have felt fake. On the other hand, I already felt like shit, so no point in humiliating me further. You know, I actually think that you can. Uh, you know, I, I had a boss after I felt like shit once, and it was a very good moment for me. Came in, and he doubled down. You know, I think sometimes there are a good time to double down on some tough talk, and sometimes not. This one seems like you probably learned your lesson. You know, can we all kind of agree that you probably learned your lesson from this one? I would probably first ask, so what are the lessons learned here? And then if the lessons were learned, then be like, yeah, you know, appreciate the action, the dedication, but let's not swap dedication for quality. Don't talk to him for a week. Don't talk to him for a week and send weird passive aggressive messages in the team Slack. That's also another option. At least, hey, how, how, how was your Saturday? Since then, we try hard to remove the need for DB access, creating their re relevant API calls. I always run queries on QA first. I know, obvious, right? Nothing makes the lesson stick more than a disaster. I consult w with the PM to understand what's really urgent and what can wait. Any update, insert, delete, query on production is done by two people. This one actually prevented other mistakes. Yeah, this actually, this is probably the best single thing to do because, you know, like at, at Netflix, I can't really, like I can't do this. I'm not even sure how to update production data. Data is very complicated and all that stuff, but this makes perfect sense right here, which is if you're going to have data, to update from a keyboard live in production. Bring a buddy, bring a buddy. You know what I mean? I started using transactions. Yeah, okay. Applying these lessons to your team. After the incident, I share detailed explanation with my team, not hiding anything or downplaying my fault. There is a thin balance between shaming people and not holding them accountable when you make mistakes. It's a great opportunity to send the right message. If you apologize a thousand times, they'll think they, ex let's see, that you'll expect the same from them. If you make fun of the incident, ignoring the implication, they'll think it's okay. If you, you'll be accountable, learn and improve. They'll behave the same way. I'm not sure if I agree with any of these things. I would make fun of the incident after I do these things. <laughs> this is part of the fun of life is when you F up. Make the guy who took down production, make a coffee cup. I took down production and all I got was this coffee cup. You know what I mean? Do something fun. Here's the deal is that when you make, f I mean, at least for me, when I get made fun of or I make fun of someone, it's because I respect and like that person. I don't make fun of people I don't know. I don't make fun of people I feel uncomfortable around with because I don't know what kind of crazy shit they're going to do, right? I stay away from that. But when you like somebody, the best way to show them that you love them is you be mean to them, right? Like that's how you love them. At least that's the family I grew up with. I don't have any longstanding emotional issues. Responding to mistakes. Uh, no worries. It's fine. Uh, productive balance. Next time, you're fired. I mean, sometimes you do have to do this part, though. I mean, it is good to set expectations, right? Would you want a boss that talks really nice to you, but if you make one more mistake, just fires you? Or would you rather have him be like, hey, you know, you really goofed up here. Like, you can't let that happen again. Okay, you let that happen again, we're gonna have some serious employment consequences, right? Like I, I do think it is good to let people know that this is real. To sum it up, encourage people to act, care about the customer and solve problems. That's how startups succeed. When mistakes are made, hold the person accountable together, understand how it could have been avoided. No need to make people feel worse than they already do. Some people need more accountability, some more encouragement. <laughs> Did we just get, did we just swap the word feel worse with the word accountability here? You know how you go to a doctor and they're like, you're going to feel some, you're going to feel some pressure. And you're like, oh, that pressure feels like pain, doctor, doctor. Is this, some people need to feel a little bit more accountability, okay? We're going to feel some accountability today. I always prefer to err on the side of encouragement. I don't like to, I try, I don't want to err on the side of encouragement or on accountability. The problem about always being too encouraging is that you don't develop like, or the expectation of an environment that's always encouraging is that you don't learn emotional resilience. You know, 2024 should be the year of emotional resilience. You know what I mean? You should really feel like 
like you can be tougher. Everyone can be tougher. Everyone can probably endure much more than you realize. It's the expectation that always worries me. And I think in today's modern world, the expectation is that everyone is supposed to be nice. But the problem I find is that some people are nice to your face because of this expectation. I'd rather have them stab me in the front than in the back. You know what I mean? And so emotional resiliency, I, I, I do want more of that even personally for myself. But should everybody be tougher? Everybody should be able to be tougher. I don't think we should make a pass that some people should just be treated differently. Nice versus kind. Yeah, I mean, you should be kind. You should you should know, like, ki kindness is a good thing. Kindness is a good thing. We should all be kind. And I don't, I you know, like, I'm not someone that, I don't communicate like Linus. Like, when someone makes a mistake, I usually think it's funny. It's, it's funny to me. Just because we all goof up, it's like not a big deal. Now, if you consistently goof up, then it is a big deal, but I just don't think it's a big, it's a big deal. You know what I mean? I guess I just have a different approach to life. You know, I think sometimes when you, when you grow up with like a really awful situation, it's really easy to over index into humor to get out of it. And so sometimes I think I over index on humor to get out of the things that probably need to be addressed. The problem is when kindness is exploited. Yeah. Escapism. Yeah, probably. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a humor coper. The name. You know the name.